ähm, Freie Universität Berlin, International Corporation Consultant. Mm, I'm delighted to see so many of you this afternoon. Uh, if you have any questions, please make use of the Q&A tool on the right sidebar or text in the chat. Mm, I'm Franka, I'm a member of the organizational team of the University Future Festival. Uh, the session is being recorded and you can watch it uh, under On Demand on this platform. Let's get digital for a week and afterwards on YouTube. And after the session, there's going to be a networking table, which you can access via the lobby. With this, I'll hand over to you, Berthold uh, Kuhn, and yes. Um, Thank you for the kind introduction. Franka, welcome. I'm sitting here in Suthaus, Berlin, in a technical room, and I'm introducing a research, teaching, and dialogue project, a small project, but we have collaborated with a large number of, of, of stakeholders, in particular think tanks, uh, consulting firms, researchers, and experts in different uh, continents. And we've come out with a book, uh, Dimitrios, he is a former student of mine, now working for the Zoe Institute and uh, myself. And here is the book, and I will go with you uh, through some of the chapters of the book. And actually, I got very good inspirations uh, from uh, my students when offering this course on, on global megatrends and international cooperation. That was one title of one of the first courses I offered. And uh, so I, uh, yeah, I, one student became the co-author of uh, this book and I'm still offering these courses and master courses this uh, last semester with good uh, participations. And students, they take the opportunity to dive in uh, these mega trends, 12 mega trends, I'll come to that. And they're also contacting some think tanks. And a lot is happening in the think tank lands uh, landscape. Uh, some of you might be familiar with some big names in the think tank landscapes like Bertelsmann Foundation, Carnegie, uh, or Brookings, uh, or the Bruegel, so on. But what we see is uh, a kind of a grassroots think tank movement. So especially here in Berlin, we have a lot of startup think tanks and we have talked to some of them. But uh, let's start. Yeah. The organizers uh, wanted uh, me to say a few words about uh, my teaching philosophy, uh, uh, my teaching approach. And I got a little bit inspired by the principles of constructive alignment uh, developed by, by John Biggs. And there are also other principles around. SRH University of Applied Science, for example, they also have as schools here in Berlin, uh, they use these core principles, yeah? Competence-oriented research and education. And what is important is to define the learning objectives, yeah? Uh, and make it very transparent and also talk about the teaching methods and the criteria for exams and assessment from the very outside, outset uh, of the course. So this is kind of my very quick methodological uh, input. Yeah, this is the book. It's published by IBIDEM Germany and Columbia University Press. When you work on megatrends uh, and future research, you have to stay on top of the agenda, of the political agenda as well. Uh, and this is, of course, pretty challenging. So uh, it's, it's not a super scientific book. It had to be written in, in one and a half years, but we've worked very hard uh, and together with, with experts, uh, we have collected, I think, some very relevant uh, uh, analysis and information related to 12 megatrends. Ah. 
But I will come to the mega trends framework a little bit later. What was important for us was the global perspective. That's really uh, uh, the unique uh, selling point of our book. We wanted to be have a global approach, also talking to think tanks in the global south. Uh, of course, there are other uh, very important reference frameworks. Yeah, you have the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable. Uh, development with 17 SDGs, yeah, and you have the SDG 11 on sustainable cities and communities, SDG 12 on sustainable uh, consumption and production, SDG 13 on, on on climate action, and this framework, I mean, combines uh, uh, economic, ecological, and social development goals. But it's still, I mean, the background of the global goals is. Is development cooperation. So the predecessors of these goals were the Millennium Goals, yeah? only eight Millennium Goals. Yeah? The first time the United Nations defined global goals were in the year 2000. Yeah? And uh, the mega trends framework, uh, of course, is, is different. Yeah? The mega trends framework is much more popular uh, with uh, big consulting firms, yeah? McKinsey, PwC, Deloitte, yeah? They all work with this megatrends framework without defining megatrends properly, I would say. Yeah. And that's where we wanted to come in. We wanted to, yeah, offer a pretty concise uh, concept. What is a megatrend? Yeah. Before I move to the next slide, I just want to say, I mean, it's very small for you to see. Of course, there are lots of other uh, sustainability oriented uh, frameworks like the planetary boundary uh, uh, framework and they this framework for example focuses on the caring capacity of planet earth so it's a really ecological framework developed by earth scientists around johann rockström one of the directors of the potsdam institute for climate uh, uh, impact research this is just the introduction that the megatrends framework, we choose this megatrends framework, uh, uh, which has a lot of overlapping, you know, with these other frameworks, because, of course, uh, the megatrends are also related to mega risks. Yeah, the World Economic Forum has really worked on the link between risks and trends. Yeah, and we have focused on these uh, on these megatrends. Ah, one, one slide more from the German Zukunftsinstitute. Uh, uh, they have been visualizing these mega trends very nicely. Here you see a kind of a metro map. And of course, these mega trends, digitalization or climate action uh, or uh, other trends like migration, uh, uh, the future of work, of course, they intersect with each other. So uh, lots of consulting firms and smaller think tanks like this Zukunftsinstitute. It's run by the Hawks family. And we've also talked to them in the context of our research. They, they present it uh, very nicely. By the way, the pioneer of Megatrends research was John uh, Nicebit. And his book, I think it sold uh, more than 14, 14 million copies in 50 countries. And he entered into cooperation with, with uh, government agencies, with universities worldwide, including in, in, in China. So now uh, you see our uh, framework uh, on megatrends. Uh, pretty simple uh, but concise framework to identify megatrends. Yeah? And the five criteria which make up me megatrends for us is coverage by researchers. If you have a lot of coverage uh, by researchers on a particular uh, issue trend, yeah, this is one criteria. Second, global political attention. Yeah, global conferences, G20, uh, United Nations Summit, yeah, which are the top issues on the agenda of these global conferences. Yeah. Third, interest by global uh, investors. Yeah. Where does the money flow into? Fourth, it's the global media coverage. About what do the media report? Yeah, 
uh, smart cities, so to say. And then social movements. Yeah, we wanted to have a comprehensive approach on mega trends, not just focusing on business or investment opportunities. So we identified these five uh, mega trends criteria. And here you see our 12 mega trends. Yeah? Climate action and sustainability, digitalization, inequality, demography, urbanization and smart cities, health and nutrition, green economy, sustainable finance, multipolar world order and the future of multilateralism, democracy and governance innovations, civilizational developments, diversity, individualization and loneliness, gender shift and identity politics and migration. To some extent, these are also themes, yeah. And of course, you have also subtrends, yeah. But to to emphasize what makes our approach different from the approach of some consulting firms or think tanks is that we also included these social aspects. Like, if you, by the way, if you type mega trends into Chat GPT, yeah. Uh, you get the typical reference to this digitalization, smart city, demography trends, but migration, not, also not inequality. Yeah? And if you read the publications of uh, McKinsey, even Zukunfts Institute, you will not find migration there. But migration is pretty much a mega trend uh, for us, definitely. We've worked with Parakana, it's a best selling author. A Singapore-based uh, uh, futurist who advised Barack, Barack Obama at the time, and he has written a book, Move Migration. One of our experts uh, we talked to, so definitely for us, migration is a mega trend. Yeah, what was uh, the methodology in for the book, for the research, but also uh, uh, in in the teaching uh, approach? Yeah, so. The students were asked to, to analyze news, data, reports, academic papers, and books. Yeah? And uh, then there were also, uh, oh, there was some wrong slide, but it doesn't matter. They were also encouraged, I mean, to attend uh, conferences. Here in Berlin, we have the opportunity that lots of you know conference opportunities are there from the political foundations from some think tanks and of course student participation is also possible exchange and cooperation with think tanks from different uh, uh, world regions yeah and uh, they're publishing reports and since corona many of them organize uh, webinars yeah uh, so great opportunities to stay on top of the agenda by registering uh, for webinars with these uh, think tanks. For the book, uh, we cooperated with 37 uh, researchers and, and experts from different uh, countries and regions. And because we wanted to have a, a, a global picture and how do experts or researchers from different uh, cultural and disciplinary and professional backgrounds look at megatrends for example smart city yeah we had uh, perspectives from mexico or inequality we have a perspective from bangladesh yeah and uh, diversity was also very important for us so in terms of gender age professional background country we wanted to have get diverse views on megatrends on future on the future yeah what do people from very diverse think tanks who, who work on, on, on future-oriented issues think of these megatrends. Yeah. Yeah, here again, I have the slide I wanted to show you just now. This is uh, the teaching methodology. I mean, the students were really encouraged also to, to reach out uh, to, to think tanks. I mean, some of the younger startup think tanks, we also invited experts uh, to, to the course. Okay, let, let me just uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, think tanks, because those of you who are not political scientists may not be
very familiar with uh, the term think tanks. Yeah, and there is only one big uh, research project on think tank uh, globally. Unfortunately, this is discontinued for the for the time uh, being, and it's a kind of a ranking. Yeah, which think tanks have a lot of influence, and you can see that U.S.-based American think tanks. They, they are by far the most influential. Uh, you know, Carnegie uh, is, is a very big foundation. Here, I also, in this table, you also see a few non-US uh, uh, think tanks. By the way, if you ask Chat GPT on think tanks, name the most influential think tanks, you only get American, US American think tanks. But uh, definitely, we will see we have we have witnessed a growth of, of of think tanks in India, in China, especially in the emerging economies, but also in Europe, yeah, in Brussels in particular, and also in Berlin, yeah. So, you, I mean, there are ten thousands of think tanks. I mean, Agora Energiewende, for example, or Adelphi is a think tank consulting firm. Bertelsmann, a bigger one, yeah. BRICS Policy Center, Brazil. Brookings, Bruegel. I just show you this slide. Uh, I mean, kind of alphabetical order to give you an idea of the diversity of of think tanks. Yeah, uh, some Germans when they think about think tanks, they think of Rand Corporation, big influential lobby groups, groups working about uh, working uh, uh, on on political issues behind closed doors, whispering uh, political leaders, but. There are a lot of uh, think tanks, for example, here in Berlin, we have one that's called Finanzwende. They do very critical uh, monitoring of the, of the financial industry here in Germany. So we cannot really uh, generalize. Yeah. Okay, uh, what is important that uh, more and more governments and ministries, yeah, uh, they work with Megatrends Research Institute, with Future Research Institute, especially in, in the US. Yeah? Uh, the National Intelligence Council, for example, uh, produces reports, advises the incoming president of the United States. Yeah? The UK government uh, has an office for science a foresight team, yeah? France Strategie, yeah? uh, Policy Horizon Canada, and also the German Ministry for economic cooperation and climate action. They also uh, work with think tanks and, and they have projects on scenario development, future scenario development and so on. I just wanted to, to highlight the, the, the relevance of the work of the of think tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Also the BMBF, for example, they also have worked on, on strategic foresight yeah, for for quite a while. Yeah. Let's come now to the chapters. I won't talk talk much longer, just uh, maybe five minutes more, because time is running very fast. I mean, uh, you can access uh, the book and you, you find it in the internet or in the library of your university. What we've done, we've talked with experts about these mega trends, but also about sub trends. Yeah? What will happen in the field of climate action in the next 10 to 15 years, yeah? Then the same with inequality. How will inequality play out uh, in the near future across different countries and, and uh, regions? Almost impossible to predict, of course, but if you seriously dive into these questions, you can still get some good answer. And I mean, we tried not to be biased in one or the other direction and talk to very diverse uh, experts. And let's look at climate action. Of course, there will be an uptick in investments in renewables. One expert from Carnegie said very clearly, investments in carbon capture and storage technologies will significantly increase. Yeah. This topic is also mentioned by the IPCC reports. It's not, it doesn't get so much attention in Germany, but definitely uh, carbon capture and storage uh, technologies will become very important also for investors. Then emission trading, yeah? The extension of emission trading 
Ja? Emission trading means a cost-effective combination of buying or selling emission permits. Two key components are limiting, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the, the certificates or cap the pollution and also tradable uh, allowances. Especially the Germans have been quite uh, skeptical uh, about uh, emission trading, but uh, it is a very powerful and perhaps the most effective uh, tool to tackle uh, uh, climate change. If you have heard about the En-ROADS Climate Action Simulator, it's a great, great tool developed by MIT US and the Climate Interactive. You can play it and you will see uh, that there are lots of policy options and measures, technology and economic measures you can apply. But uh, uh, having a price, a high price on carbon and introducing uh, carbon uh, uh, emission trading across different sectors and industries, yeah, which is very difficult, by the way. I mean, China is experimenting with it and has just the power sector on board. And the challenge is to extend, to enlarge emission trading across different sectors and industries. That will do a lot. That will be very effective in, in combating, uh, in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, We will see many more carbon neutrality uh, policies and uh, projects, I, I mean, across uh, the world. That's a good thing, whether they will all achieve uh, the ambitious carbon neutrality uh, goals is a different issue. I give you the example of the city of Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai, uh, it's a 20 million city in, in India. The business hub wants to be carbon neutral by 2050. Only five years uh, after Berlin, Berlin's uh, uh, carbon neutrality objective is 2045. We wanted to make it earlier, 15 years earlier, 2030. But as you know from the media, the referendum unfortunately did not get uh, the quorum. Electromobility technology. Yeah, here we expect a lot of leaps. Yeah? For example, now we are running the electric vehicles with lithium ion batteries. Yeah? The next generation of batteries perhaps will be uh, sodium ion batteries. Yeah? Uh, they will be, uh, they have a lot of advantages, also some uh, uh, disadvantages. They don't have the same energy uh, density, for example, but uh, they can uh, completely discharge and uh, they are not sensitive to low, low temperatures and uh, they are safer also. I mean, we didn't, the book has 400 pages and the publishing house was not very happy with it and but 12 mega trends a lot of work if you try to go into the details at least a little bit esg environmental and social governance uh, investment uh, will significantly uh, growth grow yeah and i think i want to stop my talk now i mean because i've, I've just covered one one trend yeah and uh, I, yeah, the future of climate action and sustain, sustainability. We have we have a, a, a summary uh, chapter. We have uh, yeah, we have something on cryptocurrencies, and then the next trend would be inequality. Yeah. So, but I will stop here. You have you can buy the book or what we are doing. We have been doing a lot of panel discussions. Yeah, on different mega trends.